So in this week's update from the Institute for Health Metrics and Evaluation on our COVID modeling, first, as we look around the world, uh, the good news is that we're seeing continued drops uh, at the global level in reported cases and reported deaths. And in our modeling of what the true number of infections, we also see that estimated infections are dropping and they're getting down to levels that we last saw in March. And we expect that decline at least to continue for the rest of the month. Um, if we uh, look more in detail what's behind those global trends, uh, the peaks in Southeast Asia and rapid declines in a country like Indonesia continue. Vietnam has now peaked and is coming down. And it's really only for large countries in, in that part of the world, it's only the Philippines that still has a, a major Delta surge on the way up. In uh, North America, we're seeing more US states, more uh, Mexican states peak and uh, start to come down while Canada is still sort of entering their Delta surges. Uh, and so that is still to unfold. And then in Europe, it's sort of a tale of, of two zones in Europe. In Western, Southwestern Europe, uh, Delta has peaked and is declining, but there's a big block from the border of France right through to the border of the Russian Federation, uh, extending all the way from Norway down uh, to the border of Greece where transmission is on the upswing. So we also see in uh, some countries in Sub-Saharan Africa where transmission is uh, seemingly still increasing, but none of them have very large surges. And these are either early on or they're just not taking off as we've seen in some countries like Zambia or Namibia in, in the past uh, weeks or months. So that's the sort of global story. South America continues to avoid uh, major um, uh, uh, Delta surges, and uh, hopefully that will continue uh, going forward. In our models, uh, what we see is that we expect in the northern hemisphere, uh, where we would have anticipated a big winter surge based on what happened last year, uh, we see sort of two stories, and it's a function of how many people have been infected to date and how many people have been vaccinated. Put those two together, you get our assessment of how many people are susceptible to Delta infection. And uh, in most of the U.S., what we'll see is probably, uh, uh, you know, declines. The, the current Delta peak at the national level continue and then leveling off and maybe some uh, increase, but not profound in December. So we should have many fewer deaths and also fewer hospitalizations compared to last winter in North America, uh, even if reported cases may be equal to what we saw last winter. Uh, and that's again, the, that differential effect of the vaccines on preventing severe hospitalization and death as opposed to being less effective for preventing uh, infections. In Europe, however, we expect that there will be a winter surge, partly because fewer people have been infected to date. Uh, vaccination rates are high in the Western part, but are low in the Eastern part of Europe. Put all that together and what you see is um, a sort of steady increase into the winter period uh, in our models for Europe. So different expected experiences based on that balance of who's been infected naturally or through vaccination. Uh, if we think about what might be driving, um, you know, what, what are the factors that uh, we're worried about that might make our forecasts um, not reflect what will happen? It's really two, two big factors. First is, are there any variants out there, like the mu variant, that may be uh, of concern to date? Uh, well, we haven't seen any population-based data to suggest mu is driving surges, so we're not yet concerned about that. And of course, any other new variant that we don't know about that may emerge and, and like Delta back in April, completely change our sense of what's coming. The second factor is uh, waning immunity. And of course, there's been steady uh, evidence emerging from England, from Scotland, from Israel, from the Mayo Clinic study in the US, many other studies that suggest that uh, there is waning immunity for infection. 
for the mRNA vaccines, but also for all the other vaccines. And of course, there's much more of a controversy about whether immunity for severe hospitalization and death wanes. And data from Israel published in the New England Journal of Medicine this week starts to suggest that uh, immunity for um, severe hospitalization, severe cases, and for death may also start to wane. There was also an analysis from Public Health England out earlier in the week that also suggested, at least in those with comorbidities, that uh, immunity for hospitalization and death uh, also wanes, uh, and also wanes faster for AstraZeneca than for Pfizer or Moderna. Putting all that together, we're quite concerned about waning immunity, both for infection and for severe disease and death. Uh, we will build that in, we hope, in the next few weeks into our models that will change the longer term trajectory in 2020, 2022, and um, will also allow us to sort of explore how much we can mitigate through the use of boosters or seasonal mask use what may be a bigger effect in the winter due to uh, waning immunity than we currently assess. So that's it from us this week uh, on our roundup of our modeling and analysis.